And this is Dabu7 with some Underground World News Live. Joined here with Chico and Eric M that will be joining us uh, here and there. Never know who else will stop in. Hello, everybody. Give folks out there a second to gather in. Shout outs to everybody in the chat. Shout outs to everybody out there that shares these videos, the information that we put out. We can only get this stuff so far. So when people play their part and simply share the information and get it out there a little bit further, I mean, that's, that's fighting the fight in my eyes, and I appreciate it. So shout outs to all you guys. It's the old school Mr. Green. Main Life, Casey Jane, Mr. Floyd, Robert. And it's Zach, Deer, Frying, Pedro, Mr. Young Buck, Barb, Doofenshmirtz, Betty, Dorothy. Much love to all you guys out there. And yeah, we were just... Uh, Talking a little bit about some of the headlines. I got a slew of headlines here we're going to go through here on the day. I'm going to start off here with one we were just discussing. We were speaking about protesting and um, you know, all the issues here in this country and you know how you have all these, we have a handful of individuals with all this money and you got all the people across the globe that are poor. It's like, why don't we see the protest against that? against them not helping other individuals doing the right thing. But talking about that, Reuters just posted an article that I just, I don't even think it posted here, just now posted it in the chat. So those of you in the chat that's seen it come through, by the time you hear me say that, you'll know how big the delay is here on YouTube. But this is talking about the UN seeing an alarming trend in the U.S., against free speech and it's got literally four cones with yellow tape caution tape around it maybe a 20 by 10 square at most there with the sign in the middle it says protest area this is what we were talking about you know free speech under attack obviously here in this country but where did these protest areas come from well they've popped up throughout the obama administration big time different rules, different laws implemented. And in different areas, you obviously have just that, different different rules, different laws that are put into place. But in D.C., when we were up there for the inauguration, it was literally like cages within cages. Uh, during the RNC and the DNC, they had the same thing. These areas literally caged off all the way around. And, um, you know, it... In Cleveland, I think it was, I'm not sure the guy's name, one of the judges, he stepped up and said initially that the parade route or protest route that was drawn up was basically, uh, they were trying to deny where they wanted to go, right next to the politicians, right next to the heart of the action. And the city was saying, no, you're going to have to go down this other path over the bridge and far away from the action. And this judge said, no. They have a right to be heard. They have a right, if they're going to protest, they have the people that are protesting have a right to hear them. They have a, a right to get within that range. And it, he made a stand there for free speech. But all too often out here, what we see is George Soros backed crap, paid protesters. And the reason the people are there is because they're being paid, they're being bussed in. We've seen them housing them at, the, at churches, the Masonic churches, and, and everything else across the country covering these events but i will say this th these free speech zones it's ridiculous get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and your free speech should be you know all over the place here not yeah wherever little, wherever not, you see fit like right. you should, it shouldn't be a designated area you know that they see fit for you you should be able to choose where and and mo most most importantly is of course you want to protest in the area of of the people who you are protesting you want them to hear that well if you if you're protesting the white house but they have you 10 blocks away from the white house what good is that protest? right especially right. if you're the one that's paying for that area as well especially on public property very true 
very true. And you know, what's alarming to me is that it's the freaking UN saying this. You know, we had the water crisis in Mich Michigan and it was stalling and everything else. They wanted to call in the UN to come in and save the day. And you cannot have that happening. You cannot have the UN rolling up into this country in every little nook and cranny, every chance that they get to take over and to get a foothold. We don't need them here. There's no reason for them to be here. We have National Guard. We have our we are a sovereign nation. We don't right, need they don't just always send in troops. They send in their their peacekeepers and their observers, you see. Yeah, but we it's have just... Red Cross. We have you know, we have other nonprofit organizations for this, even though they're you know, they're it's coming out more and more that these are scam organizations and that they're they're making much more profit than what they're even giving even a fraction of what they're giving back. Um, we have our own organizations for that. We have no reason for these peacekeeping. We need no light blue helmets here in this country for any anything. Right, and then there's the issue of sanctuary cities too. Um, yeah. you've you've got everything that they they labeled. Well, they got all these cities they labeled sanctuary cities, and now Trump's coming through and saying, if you don't do away with what you're doing with the sanctuary city stuff, we're going to cut your federal funding. And with that, too, the city of Seattle is suing President Trump mm -hmm. because he's threatened to cut their funding. And there's a link for that article in the description below. And he, he said it right there, the Emerald City going after Trump's administration. And they're trying to cite a few different things. They're saying the January 25th executive order withholds federal funds from so-called, what they say are so-called sanctuary cities. They go on down here to say that in the lawsuit, the Emerald City is citing a 1997 case, Prince versus the United States, where the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the federal government may neither issue directives requiring the states to address particular problems nor command the state's officers or those of their political subdivisions to administer or enforce a federal regulatory program. They can't blackmail them. They can't force them to do this stuff and, and use that is, well, we're just going to take your money. They're saying in that case, they determined that they're not allowed to do that. Now they go on to say the city is currently considered a sanctuary city due to a policy that prevents the city employees from inquiring about a person's immigration status. However, this lawsuit alleges that Seattle is in full compliance with the executive order since they are not in violation of U.S. Code Section 1373, which Section 1373 states that local officials may not prohibit or in any way restrict any government entity or official from sending to or receiving from the immigration service information regarding the citizenship or immigration status, lawful or unlawful of any individual that's what that states to get it out there so they're using that as ammunition going after trump in this instance and they're also wanting their name to be removed as a sanctuary city that way they can't use this excuse to try to cut the federal funding to that city so that's where that sits in terms of the funding but in terms of the protesting and free speech with the un stepping in a story that kind of echoes this, believe it or not, is Putin right now in Russia warning about Arab Spring type of chaos. And this is interesting because what's happening is there's been large revolts inside of Russia that the mainstream media just hasn't talked about. They go on in different cities all the time. I mean, just like here in the United States, but it's never picked up big time. Well, over here in Russia, there's a lot of anti-corruption protesting going on. A lot of it in Moscow. On the 26th, there was huge rallies where they arrested and took down one of the leaders of one of the opposition groups. And Putin's basically saying that if you people don't calm down, this place is going to turn into pure chaos. Now, that would be one way to flip turn Russia you know, on its head. Pure chaos in the streets of the country. But this is where I talk about a global scale, bigger picture. 
We've got chaos here in this country. They're allowing Soros to get away with it. Now there's chaos over in the streets of Russia. Who's fueling that? You see, and how far will it go? This is all opposition, basically, to what they see as being corrupt government with Putin heading that. And I guess his um, his response to all this is, you better you better pipe it down because it can get a whole lot crazier. And I'm not sure what he means by that. He, he references Arab Spring. You know, will there be a wave of something come through here? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But all too often, it seems like Russia tries to prop itself up as that a lot of the Russians in the country support him and back him and all this other stuff. And the way they control the media, just like the media is controlled here. They keep that propped up and they use their, their fake polls and their fake numbers. There's a link down below to a story that was just posted about 60% of Americans believe that the MSM reports fake news. That's some big numbers when you've got 60% of Americans believing that now this ties in to a bill they just shot down in California. I just did a video on this. It was AB 1104, Assembly Bill 1104, I do believe, where they were going after your freedom of speech. And they were basically saying that they could rule what was fake news and what was not fake news. And then they could remove it and they could shut you down. But you know, people standing around and involved with this was like, this is taking it too far. This is going against freedom of speech through and through, and this is going to cause big problems. So they pulled the bill. My warning, though, was this. All too often, when they put these things out there, they've got two or three more bills just sitting on deck, revised, ready to, to, to shove through. You know, and they will. They'll come back around with, with another. I mean, they try to put gun crap in, 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 in food bills. You know, that's how conniving they are. Let's yeah. not forget this is a government that just, uh, without asking their American people, just gave away the rights to all your browsing history. All of you listening, your government just gave that, that right away. For your browsing histories that they've been spying on and siphoning off of you, they're selling them now. Incognito like, or not? They're Doesn't doing it in the matter. open. They're doing this in the open. And now that they've allowed them to do this legally, we have a group of internet users that I covered in another video that have said, okay, we're going to raise some money and we're going to go after the lawmakers and we're going to buy their browsing histories. Can I touch on that really quick? On that part that you just last said before that part? Um, yeah, on the part with the internet browsing, and all, and internet history and all that stuff, Keep in mind, people, the fact that we don't just have internet in our homes, but we have it on our cell phones as well. And with that internet, is your GPSing is now switching over to your phone conversations and your text messaging. So literally now everything is going through these internets, which are now being able to be monitored and sold to third parties. He be having a phone call with somebody, and what? everything you're saying could be could be taken in real time, monitored, and then sold to a third party. So whatever you talked about will then be advertised to you, or worse. Okay. Yeah, Eric, yeah. Audrey, um, clearing your browser will not work anymore. Um, yeah, what I was saying about incognito, what I was saying is going into that incognito window in your browser that will not benefit you anymore. None, nothing. You, you not you're when they down. not when they're installing back doors from from jump street we exposed we talked the fbi the cia all of them they were exposing back doors and malware in the iphones since 2008. Yep. all of them they've got to weigh in all these things and then they try to you know make these loopholes through law where they can try to go in and retrieve all this data and all this other stuff and little bit by little bit they continue to push the envelope of invading our privacy just a little more and a little more. They do it every, ever so subtly that it's not enough to get the people up off their ass in an outrage, it seems. But they're doing it consistently. Yeah. And I want to touch back on that um, 
that poll, that 60% not believing in MSM. MSM. Um, the thing that bothers me about it is, is, yeah, more and more of the population are not believing in MSM, and that's wonderful. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. The thing that bothers me is if you put out a news article right now, say you, Dabu, you put out a news article today, and I, I forward it out to everybody on Facebook, No, a majority of the people are not going to believe it because it doesn't have a mainstream media website behind exactly. it. Exactly. That's their exactly. conditioning. You know, I, for one, I don't, I've never been that one um, for the longest time. I always, yeah, you keep, keep an eye on things, keep it, keep an eye on, on the enemy, keep an eye on, on what they're pushing, use discernment. But I've always kind of looked for that off the, well, that's where some of the true stuff is buried and hidden is it's not going to come from the mainstream media. I yep. mean, you learn, I learned that rather quickly i mean it's it's just not i mean that's what makes journalism you're supposed to be holding them accountable you're supposed to be talking about the stuff and finding the things that they don't want to talk about and it's obvious that there's a huge establishment running this and anytime anyone gets close to it um they want to label that information fake news and i believe that that in itself is part of a huge psyop that they put into motion the whole thing Everything. Every it, are there massive rings of corruption throughout all sure. all reaches of the governments? Yes, we know this. But you know, also, it's, go ahead. also with that too, uh, mainstream media has been pushing the past few days that Trump's approval rating from the nation is thirty six percent. Only thirty six percent approved what he's done. What he's done so far. Have you been pulled? Have any of you been pulled at all? Because I haven't no, been pulled. That's the problem. You know, you know, we really, it's a hard thing to do, but we need to find a way to start pulling our own polls. The problem here is it doesn't matter how many people we seem to have that, that are followers or, or subscribers. There's a buffer zone. There's only a certain distance they allow our information to get, it seems. Um, hell, we're going live now. I was just telling them you can go over there's a channel with only a couple thousand subs, and they'll promote them. The, playing their video game uh, over us talking about the real truth because it's the last thing they they want and you to that's hear. That's why everybody listening, when you see something and you think that it's righteous or whatever, make sure you share it. Make sure people see it because if you don't share it, people won't see it. Yeah, for sure. And then you're going to have a harder time when you try to talk to people and trying to find like-minded individuals. You're going to start to find a harder time to do that because I sure do. I. I have a hard time finding people who believe the same stuff as me. Well, I see here the online, people, though. The chat is here. Oh, oh, so yeah. do I. Even even with my age, back inside of school, oh my goodness, nobody understood anything because they were all just brainwashed. Well, I see people trying to share stuff like, man, Dabu, like I just tried to share this on Facebook and they're not letting me or something like that. And I could tell that it's people that are out there starting to, to fight the fight, share information, and they're starting to see with their own eyes, finally, things we've been dealing with for years that they, they, they won't share it or a tweet's been or is unavailable or, or it's just gone, broken links, all this stuff, man. Um, like we talked about with restriction mode here recently, hiding in, in, in censoring stuff, it's, it's ridiculous. And we're constantly going to be fighting this fight. It's they're going to do this. I'm going to warn all of you. They're going to do this till they they can try to stomp it out completely. The only thing that I know to do is to keep on blasting and to and to try to get people to realize that look, at some point, literally every bit of information, it, the critical information, it's going to have to be passed like a torch to the outer rings because they're not going to allow us to get there. They're doing exactly. everything in their power to stop us. So the only way we're going to break through is, is through you. I swear to you, I promise you, there's only so much we can do. We can sit here and be blasting the truth all day long. But when they're putting a lid on it and everything else, it's all these other outlets that, that are popping up, growing. Um, you go over to my Twitter. I, I'm fine with the people that follow me, the number of people that follow me. That's fine. I've watched people that have blown up with bots. And all. I don't want fake bot followers i want real people and i see the people that come through they can only have zero followers or just a couple hundred those are real people you see what i'm saying that's the base that i want i want real cats out there that, that are fighting the fight 
Um, some people were fluffed up, you know, out there on, on some of these platforms with fake numbers. And um, you've got to have substance that you have to have a, a solid group of people that's really willing to fight the fight on a daily basis. Get the information out there, you know, just to kind of try to stop us flat out. One day it's going to come down to just simply deleting the channels. Simply. It'll be a wave that goes through and on some kind of loophole or something they put into the fine print that they post one one afternoon. Over the weekend, it'll start dropping like flies. Or they'll blame it on a hack. I, I, I'm just telling you, it's going to happen. And um, we've been calling for the longest time for another platform to rise up. And I, for the life of me, I don't know why Apple or I, I know all these companies are corrupt out there, but I don't know why another somebody hasn't stepped up right now especially with everyone yanking their ads from google and been like look we'll do your bit we'll take it we'll take the business over here and we'll do this the righteous way problem is it's like everybody has that price before they sell out all these other a huge thing too um there's three new social media websites that popped up within the past week or so and every single time we get one that becomes somewhat successful as in bringing in a couple thousand people they just disappear off the face of the earth. I'm sure everybody saw that many times. We need one that will not do that to us. Or the terms all of a sudden switch and, and things start happening like it's being controlled by the same hand. The freedom of speech evaporates. Um, the censorship. You know, it kills me out here. I mean, you could sit there. We talk about it all the time. Like with music, we could be over on Periscope all day long, sitting there, music blasting from whoever. Never will you ever catch a copyright strike. Well, over here on YouTube, you don't have to have any ads playing on the video or anything. You could just be doing the same thing, running the footage and have music in the background playing. You catch a damn copy strike, copyright strike from every single song and person you play. If you don't have money on it, if you have the money running on it, most of the time they just want to claim money on it and you'll get a soft strike. If you don't, they'll just come hit you with the hard one and it's gone. So if they can't make the money off of you, they're going to take it down, gone. But see, it's the big, it's a big difference right there. If we're just trying to cover stuff in the street and people are blasting music, that becomes a problem, especially if our platform over here is doing this. And yet you go over to, like I said, Periscope, Twitter. I don't even think there is a such a thing as a copyright strike. I've never seen one, never seen anyone get, get hit for it over there. So what's the difference there with the law? It's it's in the handlers, it's in the way they're operating and put in, in functioning here. I'm telling you, it's all about that money. In the end, it's what they're doing, and the position that Google's in right now. And I think that as we said earlier, the super chat thing that they created, I think that that was pushed too to bring in revenue for them. As we stated before, with the super chat, uh, seventy percent goes to the person, thirty percent chunk goes to them. I am, is, isn't that is that the same ratio as the cut period. Yeah, right, right it, it sounds about Thank right. You. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it might actually be 68% to the creator and, um, 32 to YouTube for, we you know, where's the, where's another platform that comes along and offers the, you know, people away and, and says, Hey, look, we'll give you 80, 20, give them a better deal. And, and use all the revenue that's jumping ship from Google. I mean, it seems like it's cut and dry. The whole thing should be right there. Somebody, I mean, with the means. But as always, it's it's that hand yep. behind the scene that, that, that is stopping and, and molding all these things. They turn and, around and go and give them an insane. They, they make this business. They make this website for us to use this platform. They start getting users. The hand sees them starting to get a grasp on people yeah, they turn around and give them an unbelievable number an amount that they cannot refuse for well, they get a package at the door at the mail and they go in to open it up and they're sitting there for three days counting it and they're already in the millions of dollars like what the hell somebody just dumped millions on them yeah. you know like look uh you do as we say and there's more you know coming in it's when they're just like oh crap and like you just simply got to do this do this make sure that these guys are censored here and um yeah You'll be good. And I'm like, oh, that's all we got to do. But you see, they don't understand that it's people like us out here that keep those communities driving 
um, with information and people out there searching for information, sharing it. You ha it's about the community. You have to respect it because yeah, okay, it's, well, it's what gives life to this whole platform. It was it's built on them. Also, one thing too is those that are listening, I'm sure you've probably saw if you've been watching these channel for a while. There's a lot of people out there that are deceivers that make you think that they're doing something good and then they just take the money and run. Especially when they're getting large amounts of money, like you know who did with the three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. I mean, that says a lot about, I guess, people and their agendas, where they sit, how they think, how they operate. We've watched yeah. a lot of characters come and go, and that are some of them still. Some of what are you really doing this for? Yeah. Are you doing it for the money? Or are you doing mm -hmm. it because you want to you want to help people? You want to make a change? Or what are you doing it for? That's what it all right, comes right. down to. Not to attack anyone, but it face value when you have a group of people that come out of nowhere and they raid they they get hundreds of thousands of dollars and they do nothing with it and, and it keeps on right. You have to start asking questions um on what's going on here. And what it is, in my opinion, it's 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 funding through a very clever idea to try to to prop something up with like say kickstarter kickstarter is transparent if you can use kickstarter and put it out there and make it seem like this is funded by the people and for the people what you do is you do get some people to believe and buy into your stuff and you start to take in their money but when you know numbers and you see that these people have no following hardly and they have no reach they have no substance no good material, nothing from the field. When you start to see all these things, and then all of a sudden, right at the end, when they're asking for all this big chunk of money, it starts to rain tens of thousands of dollars like the last every time. You have to start asking yourself, how is this possible? Who, what, Where's the money man behind the scenes that's making it rain for these people that are literally doing nothing, that never go out to the field, that never even cover stuff in their own backyard, that never – It's it's really weird. That's very, very sketchy, and I don't trust it. And it's just a heads up because I guarantee you you're going to see more using that mold uh, down the road to not only siphon off some of the people, but it's basically to prop up their mouthpiece. And when it's backed by different governments and different entities and, and rich people, well, if they want, if they're pushing an agenda, uh, apparently – some of these places are serving as their mouthpiece and it's dangerous. They're not really talking about anything of substance, anything that relates to the current crisis situation, always side off the side stuff, you know, and um, just enough, I guess, to keep some people strung along, but I see it. I guess others are awakening to it. There's, there's, there's cons all over the place, man. There's con, con honors all over the place, man. Drop no names, man, but the cats get out of here and they try to, try to try to sell you anything. And I think one of the biggest problems out here is, yeah, we all know you got to work. It takes money to survive. Most of all of us here in this circle come from the gutter. We come from the streets. You know, we don't, uh, nothing with a silver spoon. We all grind in, we've all, from, from what I see and what I know with everyone around me, everyone's always appreciated anything that you guys out there have done to help us along the way that's to the fullest but during this you come across some weird characters and i came across some characters in these networks that i think are really the downfall of the whole truth or community you want to look at one channel you want to look at uh, one mouthpiece you want to call somebody a shell out here and the self was a lot male and female they're being controlled at the top in certain instances. And you can tell which ones are in the same groups because they push the same products. Hint, hint. But these individuals, um, they're money-driven first, not truth-driven. You see, that's the first problem. And they try to turn what should be real news into more of an entertainment type thing with shock titles, twisted information. And 
that's that's the number one problem. I, I there's ain't nowhere else to go with that. When 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 it becomes that is you, the number one thing to you over, you know, the interesting things going on. When it when you have people that work for you that leave, and say that uh, you've been ordered to find the craziest headlines and concoct the wildest stories that you can to get views. You know, there's obviously some problems there. It shows that people are just money hungry. And these are people that you never see in the street. You never see them at any of the protests we've covered all these years. They can have one in their own backyard. They don't go out and do nothing. 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 Ever. Anywhere. They never do nothing and they'll never get out and do nothing. And they've got the means. Believe that. Several of these channels, some that rode the coattails of Trump, you know, with the whole Hillary for prison thing that a lot of people made a shit ton of money off of. Where's that at? Huh? Like I told you, she ain't going to jail. She never will. Until you people hold her accountable. All the rest is a fantasy. Until you snap the out of it. It's going to remain that way. So back to what I was saying about the shills here, because this is important, because I'm not going to be around forever. I'll tell you right now, they've got targets on all of us. They censor us so heavily. They, they're they working to fully eliminate us. Can, can I say something really quick on the censorship? Yeah. Um, on the iCitizens Facebook page, for a good amount of time, I want to say for about a week or so, we couldn't even share the links off of the Facebook. Like we couldn't share it to any pages, to any statuses, to nothing. Like, like especially for me, I was temporarily banned from sharing anything. That's major censorship right there, to where you can't even That's share on. it. That's on. Off the website. Off of the it's, website it's and YouTube. on the app. It's, it's, it's the apps, it's, it's the website, it's not just YouTube, it's, it's everything connected, man. Um, the connection even to Twitter were always censored. And, you know, to finish up with the whole thing here, I think it needs to be known that there are individuals out here, I call them the money men behind the scenes that are orchestrating all this stuff. And they're money driven. That's the problem. They're not, uh, they care not about any truth. All they sit and they love while they smoke their cigars in the little shops. It's these fantastic headlines and shock titles. It doesn't matter if you sit there and tell them, man, that ain't freaking real. Oh, man, but you, they will make themselves believe it to sell it to the, to the guys and gals running these channels. And they will make them feel that it's okay to do this. And all that money's coming in, I guess they're thinking it's okay. But some have seen the repercussions of this because it's cotton up to them. And that's the game. It always does, and it will. People are going to see through you in due time. And all I can say is people just do the right thing out there, walk righteous, just do the right things, you know, and uh, cut ties with the corruption that's out here, the people that are implanting the thought in people's minds that, uh, I mean, literally, you have some of these guys feeding, seeding the minds of some of these channels out there. You wonder how this works, operates the seriously, let's sit there and see them with these ideas and all this other stuff. It's happening. These are the same individuals that'll lie to you until you come to a network, get a better deal. <laughs> like they try to do to everybody out here. And what happened with that? That was a lie. Believe it or not, they pushed that. A full-blown lie that we will give you a better deal just to hook you, knowing it's a lie. That's scandalous. And then once you're in, it's, oh, no, no, I thought you knew. It's, it, it, it's not 80% or 90%. Uh, uh, it, it's 80 or 90% of the 70 that you get from Google. Well, hold the f up. Nobody ever said that. And nope, they don't. You see? And once they get you in, they, they say, oh, well, we can, you can, we can get you these sponsors, but you can do this. You can sell this. Well, I don't want to sell nothing. You see? So what good are you for me then? You'll see with these other cats out there, they promise them one of the caveats they got is they'll get them the 15-second non-skippable ads to run and promise them they'll get more money that way. Um, 
So when you see that, you know they're tied into. You go over to Social Blade and actually type in a channel, and it'll show you who they're claimed by. It's not 100% all the time, but um, give you a good idea who's working with who. And I think that you deserve to know that. Don't you? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And um, as far as the censorship goes and uh, the links not being passed around, one thing I learned from marketing is the best form of advertisement is word of mouth. That is 100% the best form of advertisement for you to just share it, just say it to somebody. Yeah. That's the best form right there. Yeah, I mean, talking about corruption, and corruption runs deep in this country. We've got, I mean, across the globe. I talked about uh, the DA out of Philly, the district attorney, getting caught on corruption here recently for bribery, taking money from uh, the wealthy, the same old game. If you wonder what's wrong with all the, the branches of government and anything else out there. It's, it's that example. Individuals taking the money and turning the cheek. The DA was doing that on the highest levels. We have uh, information that he was allowing high-profile individuals, the wealthy, to fly into certain airports through no security checks through no probing, getting padded to, through none of this stuff. And uh, just there's, there's a different level of status where these individuals can just come and go as they please. And basically, they, feel, they operate like they're above the law, in a sense. And when you have this whole sh shadow government in operation, which is a real thing, pulling the strings, it's, uh, it, it gives these guys the license to do all this stuff behind the scenes. And, you know, a Mexican... The Mexican attorney general now facing the same thing, drug trafficking charges, arrested in San Diego, another attorney general right there, busted for corruption. Same thing. The FBI arrests the State Department de employee for spying for China. Uh, that's another link I've got down there. Corruption all over the place. And we were talking about the drug running. How does it get here? You know, none of the guys in the hood's got airplanes and Cessna's driving them in. Who's doing that? Hmm. Well, interesting because I haven't found the yesterday's report, but Eric was mentioning how there it looked to be a military plane that had to make an emergency landing in Ohio. Now I'm waiting to try to get that initial story so we can read over it if we can get a link to that and see what they say there. But the timing, we have a plane that was going from Canada to the Bahamas made an emergency landing at Ohio University Airport. And in doing so, the feds were like, hold on, You're, this isn't a port of entry, basically, so we're going to search your, your plane. And when they did, they found 300 pounds of cocaine. So somebody had posted, somebody posted earlier uh, the flight pad or the history on that on that flight i'm gonna have to do some more digging on this but it's interesting because eric just put out a story of off the coast it was the the eastern pacific i guess off the coast of california our west coast there was just a huge bus seven was it 17 vessels taken in with how much street value eric yeah. over one of billion dollars yes that's b for billion that's how much cocaine was just taken out there. And then 300 pounds of cocaine just taken out here on this one flight. So that's a lot of blow. That uh, that ain't all of it either. There's been and, a lot of stuff that's been getting caught in the past two to three days. And you I, know what, I actually did an article on one of them on iCitizen right before I left for work. I just don't have it in front of me right now to tell the numbers. That's over on iCitizen's. You guys check it out over there, I Citizens News. And um, this is interesting because they refused to name the pilot and the passenger that was with him. They say that they're holding them on federal charges, but they will not name them. And that contradicts the story that, that they put out yesterday. When they it's were it. they said yesterday that there was two two pilots coming in from Canada. That were yep. part of the Canadian government for their surveillance division or whatever, and they had to make an emergency landing 
and due to something with the language barrier, because in Quebec they speak French, that they couldn't really speak to them properly. So they told the Ohio University police to to keep them there until Homeland Security arrived, which Homeland Security arrived by plane. Come on, you're kidding me. That is what it said. Th these were, dude, this could be a freaking monster story. It, you're, it telling, you're telling me that was put out yesterday. That is insane. What? I said that what you found contradicts everything of what was put out. I yesterday. need some links. We need some stories. I need. A, I need a link. I need. To, we need some stories, big time here from yesterday, showing that they stated that this was military pilots from Canada's military controlling this freaking aircraft. Because if that's the case, they just got busted. They just got busted pushing three hundred pounds of cocaine. It' funny how the stories change now, and there's no names given. This is pretty crazy. This could be huge. It could be huge. Canadian military plane busted, or one that's registered under the military. They're saying it had to be some kind of tech. They're saying a technical surveillance plane or something. It looks like a little Cessna from the image that they have. A smaller plane. You know, just like they did in the in the movie Blow. You guys ever think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Back and forth. John Travolta has got a freaking airport in his front yard. That dude could take off in his own plane and land at his property in Mexico on his other airstrip and never have to deal with customs, TSA, assault. <laughs> you see? And apparently these guys were flying from Canada to the Bahamas. Their flight records show that they've been made multiple trips, which means they've been drug running this whole time. Um, the, I just uh, I just put something um, inside of a Twitter message to you. Check that out and check that um that Twitter handle. And that's only a screenshot I have since I'm not on my computer. Okay. Okay, so it was a Julia Fair at Ohio University Airport where an unauthorized international aircraft landed. Then Bo Brindler, this is a Beechcraft Huron MC-12W Liberty. It's a U.S. Air Force slash Army surveillance aircraft. I don't think there are any foreign operators. So this is, I'm reading off tweets from yesterday, guys, that this was a military aircraft that landed unauthorized at Ohio University. And now here with these other links, they are stating, over at the NY Daily News that the, the Fed seized 300 pounds of cocaine from a Canadian plane landing. So we either had two mysterious planes coming out of Canada landing at this airport at the same time for technical difficulties, guys, or this is the same plane. Do you see? And if it was for the same thing, why was the Canadian, I mean, that we need to figure this out and get to the bottom of it here. Give us some time. I'm not a huge believer in coincidence. You know, if, if these were separate planes, was the other plane tracking this one the whole time? I mean, why don't they just come out and state that? If that's the case, there seems to be some confusion in the images that you sent me. They're showing an aircraft with circular windows. That air that aircraft is in the image, but not the center aircraft over at NY Daily News. I'm not sure they took a picture of the wrong one or if that's the one. But the one, the military one, is in that shot literally right next to it. I will drop this link in the chat. It's in the description box to the NY Daily News. You guys can see what that plane looks like. 
And if you guys look up on Twitter at Fair Three Julia, that's F A I R, the number three, Julia, J U L I A. She has a tweet sent out showing this aircraft. It's, just, it's interesting. So the military one is definitely the one with the circles because it has a dome on the top of it. The one center of the NY Daily there, the white one, if that's the one they're saying that it was, well, it's, it look to the right. You're going to see the circular windows on that gray aircraft. That's it. That's the surveillance aircraft right next to it. Right next to it. So they're failing to put the pieces to the puzzle together simply on this story if it was two aircraft because it looks like the other one, the other plane was tracking it. Um, how could they both go down for tech glitches at the same airport? My ass. Uh, there's, there's more to this story. I will continue to update as new revelations come along on that one. But uh, interesting nonetheless. Check some of the headlines here. See two White House officials trending. What's it saying? Help to give Devin Nunes intelligence reports. It's a freaking circus. So, yeah, there's uh, links for all this stuff below. Uh, I also have a story here out of Canada saying that the Saskatoon police are investigating an explosion that took place last night at the courthouse. They were being tight-lipped about this at first. This is in Saskatchewan. Kilbourne, Poli uh, Kilbourne Place. And it looks like it did enough damage. If you go to the link, what they're saying, a huge bang here, to where it rip, ripped down the roofing and, and everything else, so the scaffolding, whatever was around there. But that's interesting. That there was an explosion at a courthouse. Um, like I said, there's more details there at that link. We also had over in West Sussex, Shoreham, we're on the other side of the pond. We had a plane go down. These people go down in a small aircraft and were fortunate enough to survive and had to swim to shore. It's not every day that that happens. Yeah, people going down in an aircraft there in Sussex and survive that one since we're on aircraft here. Now, switching gears here to Duke Energy, they are seeking $1 billion in insurance claims for coal ash contamination. This is interesting because we've talked about the connection with coal ash and the use of coal ash for the dispersion of the aerosols that you're seeing with the, the chemtrails in the skies. Now, the, the, one of the, the head guys had come out and stated, and I put the video out on it, that they were indeed doing this. They are aerosol spraying. It admitted that there was metals and other elements inside of these, and that they were basically trying to watch the wind pattern was his excuse from space by satellite. And I, it don't fly with me. Um, there's a whole lot more to it, but that was the admission of them doing it. And the connection, the dispersal, the, the vessel, so to speak, you mix all this with the coal ash, use it, or, or fly ash. There's one of the two. There's coal ash and then a the fly ash as they break it down. But we've talked about what do they do with some of the stuff and where are they taking it and where are they dumping it? Well, apparently, some of the places that they're dumping, this is getting into the groundwater. This is getting uh, into the water table and it's contaminating some stuff. And of course, there's lawsuits being filed and uh, it's totaled $1 billion thus far. But, uh, the contamination, I mean, they don't go into specifics of exactly the exact location. They talk about South Carolina, North and South Carolina. But they, they, they're very vague from there. You can only assume that this is going on in more places. And before we went live earlier, we were talking about uh, North Korea here, Kim Jong-un and his threats. Apparently McCain called him a little fat kid or something. Something he called him, capped on him. And um, Kim Jong-un is saying that's an act of war. And now they're saying they're going to they're gonna carry out multiple or simultaneous tests of plutonium and uranium bombs. 
That's going to be next. You, you mark my words. Don't be a mushroom cloud. Come off that Korean peninsula at some point. And I can guarantee you it, this, it's just, it's too, it's too chaotic to have, have this going on. Like somebody's going to nuke them. Something's going to mess up or something, or they're going to allow this puppet state to nuke someone else. And then they're going to nuke them and drop the mushroom cloud. One of the two. Well, but, while we're talking about little Kim, um, he wants his he wants his uh, half brother back, the body from Malaysia. So, he offered to exchange nine Malaysians for the body of his brother, and uh, Malaysia has agreed to it. The nine Malaysians are diplomats that were there, but after his brother was killed in Malaysia, they stopped North Korea stopped them from exiting the country. So. Um, yeah, they're offering. He offered a uh, little Kim. He offered a trade to Malaysia for his brother in exchange for nine Malaysian diplomats. Well, I'm seeing reports now coming out that Obama blocked the FBI from revealing Russian interference. And they're saying that this goes back to the summer of 2016. And now Comey's trying to come out and, and cover his ass. He's trying to say, FBI Director Comey saying he tried to reveal Russian tampering months before the election, but was ordered by the Obama administration. This is going right into this other report I just said. And this is Hannity pushing this. So this is what they're going to be pushing tonight, I'm sure, on their show. All this stuff that Obama did these things. Um, it shows that they were basically they were manipulating the timing of all this for sure, which it's all manipulated obviously as always there's links for all the stories we've covered here down below in the description box i know this is kind of an off the wall live show today but hey may do more like this here in the future but yeah i hope everybody out there is having a good day you uh you got anything else there on deck there, Chico, any other stories pulled up? Um, no, the only other thing that I was I seen was that uh, the Hawaiian judge did the infinite block on the travel ban 2.0. And um, I just, I know, probably a lot of people already seen it, but I, I just thought it was awkward that Obama was having lunch with this same judge just hours before he blocked the ban, um, the travel ban initially. Oh, no, that's, that's pretty significant. <laughs> Yeah, and um, on top of that, he was also – they also graduated from the same college at the same year. And, um, yeah, I don't know. They also have a picture with each other at the restaurant that they ate at just hours before that judge blocked the ban. So I thought that was interesting. But that brings up – it reminds me of uh, Loretta Fuddy. She was one of the sole individuals that knew everything with Obama's birth certificate. And she went down in a plane crash from Hawaii at the timing when all the stuff was real big, too, with, with his birth certificate. And, like, she held the keys to it. And every single person survived when that plane hit the water. She was perfectly fine. And they were in the water floating. And when they, the rescue people got there, she was floating dead. Yeah, like somebody inside the plane killed her. Like, like something happened. It was very suspect. I'll never forget that. And of all people, she was the one that was supposed to be talking, upcoming, talking about everything with Obama's birth certificate, uh, her, the signing of everything officially, and then she's dead. Yeah, I mean, it always happens like that. It's, it's, right. it's, and it's just, you know, it's always just a coincidence, you know, that the person who happens to hold the keys on to blowing the lid off of a huge case just happens to die, kill themselves, kill their wife, and then kill themselves. Shoot and then themselves like, their house on fire after yeah. they killed themselves. Right, right. It, it, it shoot themselves up 120 times with a nail gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just this crazy stuff. Or rip out their own esophagus. and yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, sooner or later people really, I mean, I'm not talking to the people in this chat, but the rest of the world needs to wake up because 
this is not a joke. I read something a while back, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people read it, and I don't remember the words exactly, but it was like, uh, when they were after the Jews, I, I did nothing because I'm not a Jew. When they were after the reporters, I did nothing because I wasn't a reporter. But when they're after me, I have nobody to help me because I didn't help anybody else. And it's like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's not That's the exact word. Saying, right. I know. It's it's almost like people out there that, 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 that sit on their ass. Why all the others out here are proactive. They sit there thinking that uh, you know some white knight is going to come and save the day in – and fix all the problems like a fairy tale um it just isn't that easy it actually takes those people to have to get up off their their tail and and, and, and do something it doesn't you, you do what you can it doesn't mean you have to go here do this do that i mean you do what you can to fight the fight but definitely sure. more people have to be proactive, proactive. you have to be yeah. more caring um, and not turning a cheek you know i remember I heard someone say a long time ago, why do you care about what's going on in Iraq? That's their problem. Be lucky. I'm like, no, that's not, I'm not turning the cheek. You're, that's the type, put your head back in the sand. You know, that's, yeah. that's how I felt like yeah. you're just, you're living a fantasy and, and that's a world that I can't live in. You know, Agreed. to me, it's like, it's like, you know, it, all the people, we're all the same. We're all brothers and sisters, whether you're religious or you're not religious, we are all human beings. That's our race. We're the human race. It's not, this race of African American race or Amer white American race or Hispanic American race. That's all bull crap. We're all the human race. And, you know, I have a neighbor. He lives next door to me. He always, he he's old. He's an older man. I, I mean, I'm young. I'm 29 years old. My neighbor, he's 58 years old. He's the age of my father. And um, he's this old Air Force guy. But he always says like, you know, if the aliens were looking down at us and, and being more superior than us, they would never want to come down here here and, and make contact with us because they would look at us and think like look at them they're killing themselves they're having war with themselves they're blowing themselves up they're they're imbeciles they're right. they don't have over any the, sense. Over, over the color of their skin right yeah over it's the color true. of their skin like who you know and that 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 makes so much sense to me it's like why would a superior race ever want to come and and present themselves to us when we can't even stop ourselves from killing each other How, what what danger would they then put themselves in you know, like, I don't know. I mean, and yeah. that's if you do believe that there's other beings out there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I believe in God. I believe God created the earth. Um, you know, I also believe that everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Like, I don't want to force religion down anybody's throat. Right. You, know? you got to be able to bring all. You got to be able to bring thoughts and opinions to the table. And and even though you don't agree on everything, you still got to be able to collectively um, evaluate evaluate the information. It, in a righteous banner, so to speak, because I mean, hell, we don't, all of us don't always agree on everything all the time. And you've you got to keep it together. You can't, can't turn into a cat fight. And they do a, a good enough job of labeling you left, right, Democrat, Republican, or, or creating these labels and then wanting you to gravitate toward one of them. And then all of a sudden, once you've gravitated toward one of them, all of a sudden, somebody over there, you might have gravitated towards something else and they've split you all of a sudden well you were just best friends but all of a sudden this hey, person take says, a check your footer it, it kind of falls in line with that story from that canadian plane and we have windsor police they say trouble indeed windsor police lose twenty five thousand dollars worth of cocaine what the hell is going on here with this took a kilo they're saying nine <laughs> ounces of cocaine were $25,000 disappeared from the wow. drug vault at Windsor Police Headquarters, and no one can say for certain what happened to it. Our revelation came, oh, this is ridiculous. It's the same old crap. Yeah. And where's it going to go? Where, where's that nine ounces of cocaine going to go? It went up somebody's nose. I ain't going to find it's gonna it. It's going to go onto the street. It's going to go. Right. It, right. I mean, it's going to get somebody's. Quick turn. I mean, if there's a yeah. corrupt cop in them ranks, then oh, they just yeah. switch right to the one of the street dudes, and boom, boom, just got yeah. just got paid. You know, the, the same individuals that are supposed to be fighting take it off the street, the corrupt one turn around, and put it right back on. And that's the bull crap, man. That's the cycle. That's the game. Alphabet gangs. That's the bull crap. 
it's all the same thing, you know. It's all about what where your morals are, you know. Like I said earlier, it's about it's and that's it, it, that's life. Period. Like comes down to the hearts of men. You know, mm. where, where do you where do you stand? Are you are you more interested in becoming famous or rich, or are you more interested in helping humanity and being a humanitarian, helping people realize the truth and seek out wisdom and knowledge, which are the real riches of this earth? Right. Exactly. Yeah, and a shout out to everybody out there in the chat. Sure, three hundred and seventy. Much you. love, much love, everybody out there. I'm going to shut it down here for this session of Underground World News Live. Thank all you guys for joining us here today. You never know when we're going to go live again, but anytime I get a slew of headlines together, window of opportunity, I like to go live and um, get the information out there. So. Once again, I want to thank everybody out there that shares the info. It's truly appreciated to the fullest. Uh, everyone out there that fights the fight. And we will see you on the flip side. It's been Dabu7 and the crew. Some underground world news. Thanks, everybody. Much love, y'all.